I'm excited about learning new languages and making new friends. I know there's a lot, of, a lot more homework. I'm a bit nervous, but I'm excited too. I'm a bit worried about going to the right classes and getting my homework in on time. You started off as the big fish of the primary school and then was a little fry of the high school. Hi, I'm Yasmin. And I'm James. Welcome to In Transit, a DVD to help make the transition from primary to secondary school. It can be an anxious time for students and their parents alike. Change always brings its challenges, and shifting schools is a big change. The good news is that most young people make the transition comfortably and happily. And the bad news? Well, there isn't much bad news. But we want the transition to work as smoothly as possible. Happy children, happy parents. That's what matters. We hope this helps. So let's start with the basics. What actually happens? How does it work? This section of the DVD deals with some of the basics of transition. Your child might have strong views about the secondary school he or she wants to go to, but you should be involved too. It's a big decision and you'll be the one signing the forms. It's important that you know what it's about and how it all works. If you're finding it hard or complicated, the school your child is going to now will definitely be able to help. What do we have to do and what actually happens? The primary school your child attends now is where it happens. Early in the year, usually around April or May, you'll be asked to fill in a form saying what your preferences for your child's new secondary school are. You can change them, but it is worth trying to get your real preferences as close to right as possible. This is the time to start preparing for the next year. What schools can we choose? One of the options is to go to a private or a church school. If you want to do that, approach the school directly and they will explain the process. Otherwise, what you do will be governed by the Victorian government's policy. Government schools have enrolment zones. In this example, you can see there are schools here and here. And this is the boundary line for the zone. If you live on this side, you have a guaranteed place at this school. And if you live on this side, you have a guaranteed place over here. If you want to go somewhere else and the school has plenty of places available, that will probably be okay. But if you want to go somewhere that doesn't have many places available, you'll need to have special reasons. The main one is that you have other children going to the school where you want to send your child. All schools are keen to keep families together. The school you'd like to go to might have special programs in areas like music, art or sport that your child is good at and you can make a case to be allowed to enter. There may be other special circumstances where you might be allowed to enrol your child on compassionate grounds. You'll usually need to sort that out yourself, however they will have to be special circumstances. One important thing to remember though is that your child does have a guaranteed place at secondary school. If your child has identified special needs and is funded under the Program for Students with Disabilities, you have the choice of enrolling them in a specialist school or enrolling them under the integration program in a mainstream secondary college. How do you find out what schools are like? One place to start is to have a look on the web. The Victorian government has a site for just this purpose, which covers all government schools and services. This site includes all schools, government and non-government. Information on websites is really helpful, but there are much better ways to find out what school is really like. That's where we're off to next. get information about schools on a website but there's nothing like visiting to find out what they're really like. There are a lot of opportunities to do that. Or you can set up your own. One thing you can do is make an appointment with the school for a tour. Ring up and ask the person in the office to help you arrange it. You might be lucky and get a tour on your own or more likely you'll be asked to join in with a group. Don't be afraid to ask questions about anything you're interested in. And don't be afraid to go back to the school and ask questions you've thought of after your visit. And don't forget open days. Every school has at least one each year. You'll be made very welcome and there will be a lot of parents looking around. You'll be in with everyone else and it's a good chance to meet a few of the teachers. Each year we organise a whole bunch of open days for the families and, and students to come in and have a look at the school. Um, grade fives, grade sixes, um, we get primary school groups actually coming over during the day. Um, and we get the kids to come over and meet the teachers, um, do some activities, play some games, 
and the principal do a speech for the parents. Um, we, we set up a bunch of stalls to show off the, the different things that the school has to offer, like the music program, the school play, the sports programs and things like that, so that the kids can really get a feel for what they're going to be doing when they do come over. What can you ask questions about? What are the sort of things that you'd like to know? What do we do about uniforms? Do you run any special programs? How much is school fees? Are you more active than? How do I stay informed? Make a list for yourself, and every time you think of something, write it down so you don't forget. Hey, how about us? Have you put down the things we want to know? Yeah, how about sports? And computers. Where do I keep my books? We certainly haven't forgotten the students. There are plenty of chances to visit, and most schools these days have a transition program for students interested in enrolling. We invite the kids down and they come in and they, uh, they're in their actual classes that they'll be in next year and so that they can meet their friends and see who they're going to be with and teachers um, and they can develop those relationships that they need to. Towards the end of grade six we had an orientation day that like the teachers took us around the school, showed us what was what and the system that they had here so that helped us a lot. There are some things you can only learn through experience. I think everyone knows that. And that's just as true for changing schools, especially from primary to secondary when some things do change. That's what we'll be talking about next. I'm excited about all the different classes we get to do, like the science we go to one room, then the history we go to another room and maybe geography. One of the things that I'm worried about is forgetting my locker combination. The thing I'm worried about uh, is getting lost because it's a much bigger school. Here you know where everything is because we've been, I've been here since prep, but now over there will be like I'm in prep again. What changes from primary to secondary school? What do kids have to deal with in terms of new arrangements and experiences? The biggest challenges for the students would be the logistics of getting used to how the school operates. I think you go from primary where you have one general teacher that covers most subjects um, to coming to, to secondary college where you have a, numerous diff a different teacher for basically every class. Their timetable in itself is a, is a really critical one because when they see their timetable for the first time, it can look like gobbledygook because you know, it'll have a, a code for a subject, it'll have a room number, and it'll have a code for a teacher. It's logical, but again, it needs to be translated. The, the kids need to find, you know, they, they need to learn what that actually means. The biggest change would be lockers. In primary we had tubs, they're like little boxes, and we put our books into that, and they're under our desks, so if we need something that we forgot, we can take it out. We don't have to ask the teacher. We just take it out. But in secondary, you can't do that. Teachers don't let you. It's hard when you lose your locker keys because you have to keep going back and forth to your teachers, asking them to get the master key and opening it up. In primary school, you pretty much never forget anything because you barely have anything to take home. But in high school, you have your books for, say, for example, the three lessons straight away you have to take them all with you and take them to every single class. One of the things that we will say, say to kids very early in the process is you need to make sure that you do understand that you have to organise yourself. That's something that we support children with but they do need to step up and make sure that they're helping themselves by having all of their equipment, that they're at their lockers nice and early so that they're able to be organised and ready for class. All Year 7 students, all students in the school are expected to have a school planner and it's really important that students take those planners to every class and that if they are given homework, it's up to them to put the homework in the due date, take it home to their parents. Students who use their planner, their planner diary well and, and use it every day, um, make a much better transition to secondary school. In Year 7, students may be expected to do more homework than they did in primary school. Homework? Yuck! Homework? That's a story in itself, isn't it? Let's hear some questions you might have about homework, and then we'll hear what school leaders have to say about it. Why should kids do homework? Kids should do homework because it develops good habits. And if you're expecting, you know, a child that hasn't really started to at least get into routine, 
and learn how to balance their work, rest and play, then of course it may be quite difficult for that, per that child, that student to actually get into that routine later. So it's better just to little bit by little bit to start off with that. You know that if students take their homework home, put it in their diary, complete it at, at the right time, then their outcomes, their, their, their academic outcomes are going to be better than students who don't. I don't mind doing the homework because it's good for revision and learning all of the formulas. I'm not a big fan of homework, but if it's going to help you in the future, in future classes, then I'm going to do it. You're getting yourself ready ahead of time without actually noticing it. You're just doing the work and it sticks in your head, so you're not all stressed out just before the test. Um, in year six, I had a test English and I got 50%, just passed. And then in year seven, they gave me more homework to revise and I got 70, so that actually helped me more. What does my child need to help with homework? Just the basics, a quiet area, that's very important. Um, just a basic desk so that they know that that is their study area, a place where they can, you know, a comfortable area for them as well, and time. What role should parents play with homework? Independence would be the key here, to really look that their child should be able to independently complete their homework. Having a communication line about homework with, with young people is very important. Parents need to be supportive in terms of making sure that, that they gently help create that routine. There's something that nobody has mentioned yet and it's the biggest thing of all. Mm -hmm. I think I know what you're going to say. Would it be making friends? It certainly would. I'm a bit worried because none of my friends are going to the same secondary school as me. I think that's going to be hard because probably won't know anyone. Making new friends is going to be kind of diff difficult for me because I'm a really shy girl. I was pretty scared but then like once I was in class with like the new people it, it was quite easy to make friends because they were all like friendly. Making friends wasn't hard at all. What happened with me is like I met friends through friends. Once you get to know everyone in your classes, it's really good and you make new friends. It's interesting, isn't it? Making new friends might seem difficult, but most kids manage it easily. And, of course, learning about other people might be the biggest education of all. Especially at this time of life. The next section of this DVD is about growing up. Growing up, it's not always an easy thing, is it, James? That's true, yet yeah, we live with young people doing it every day. Yep, I think everyone agrees that adolescence is an especially hard time and it happens right about the time that young people are making a big change in their lives by changing mm. schools. Adolescence can be a bit of a mystery. What does an expert have to tell us about it? Adolescence is when your child experiences rapid physical and psychological change. Adolescents want to become more independent, find out who they are and where they fit in. They want to belong to something and be accepted by their peers. So when your child enters adolescence, you'll find that your influence as a parent tends to decrease and they seem to be much more concerned with their peers' opinions and what their friends think. And in an attempt to assert their need for independence and individuality, they may sometimes prove to be somewhat uncooperative with their parents. When they transition to secondary school, their main aims are likely to be figuring out where they fit in and trying to find a sense of belonging within a peer group. So give your child as much opportunity for social success as possible. This means encouraging them to join in the extracurricular activities at school and having a friendship group outside of school like girl guides or scouts or a sporting team. Having an accepting peer group influences your adolescent's personality, their confidence and ability to cope with the transition from primary to secondary school. There is one issue that we should give a special mention to, bullying. I think it's fair to say that it happens right through society, but schools are trying to do something about it. It's something that shouldn't ever happen and it's important to stand up to bullies and try to change their behaviour. Let's hear what some school leaders have got to say about this. Well, one very important thing that schools do is run a lot of bullying awareness um, campaigns. Schools do it very differently, but the whole idea is to really get out the message that bullying is not tolerated, and that's a very strong message that should be given out. There's always a, a set of procedures and processes where students, if they feel as though they're being victimised by another student, have got a very clear set of people that they can go to. We don't want kids to 
hold on to the, themselves. We want them to let the coordinators, the, the teachers and anybody else know straight away about it, including their parents, because we will listen to the parents straight away. The parents will get to us. We will then follow it through. And today we have to deal with issues of cyberbullying as well, which is a very serious problem. Cyberbullying is where kids use the internet to victimise other kids by saying horrible things about them or finding other ways of making them embarrassed or ashamed. There's good advice online about this. But if your son or daughter is having a problem, it would be a good idea to let his or her teacher know and work out a plan together to stop it happening. I think one very important piece of advice with cyberbullying would be to actually save that unwanted or bad message, if you like, because that actually does become quite important evidence and proof of what's going on as well. So definitely don't delete an unwanted message, although our instant reaction would be so, is to actually print it out, save it, and then it just makes you know a lot more easier to find out the who and when and exactly what was being said rather than just leaving it up to you know trying to recall that information. So what's the best advice about living with adolescents? The one thing that's likely to be most beneficial for an adolescent when they transition from primary to secondary is having a supportive person that they can share their thoughts and concerns with a trusted adult. We've been talking about staying in touch with adolescents. Now, what about staying in touch with schools? That can be a real issue when your children move from primary to secondary school, and that's where we're going next. It often seems like primary schools are small and welcoming places where you know most people. But then your kids go off to secondary school and all this changes. Secondary schools are often bigger. Your kids don't just have the one teacher and it can seem hard to find the person you want to talk to. Let's hear some advice about staying in touch. In most secondary schools, the Year 7 coordinators will be the people who parents will be advised to, to contact first of all. Usually uh, there will be a homeroom teacher that they will have daily contact with or a coordinator that probably will be someone that will be keeping tabs and have, a, have an idea of an overall picture of um, the year level as well. Schools encourage parents to read uh, school newsletters as they do often uh, contain lots of very valuable information. Um, schools will distribute these in either a hard copy form or on the school website. But of course if it's an urgent matter, um, telephone is, contact is very important. Um, nowadays with technology advancing the SMS contact is great to inform the parent for example on the spot when their child is absent and not at school. So that's why it's really important that parents do keep their details updated at all times. We have a, quite a range of ways to communicate with, with families who may not speak English. We have our multicultural aids we ha and, and access to interpreters at any time. But the best way to find out what's going on in and around the school is to actually be involved and there are many ways that you can do this. You can join parent organisations or stand for membership with the school council or board. There are always jobs around the school that parents can help with. Getting involved helps everyone concerned. For parents it's really important that they make themselves known to the people who are um, working with their um, child. We have a morning tea. It's important for the parents to come up and do, you know, to, to meet people. We've had, uh, for example, the welcoming barbecue to the Year 7s where our parents have actually become involved um, with that. Where I guess the extra pair of hands are needed, whether it be a barbecue, an end of year performance, that they can be there with their um, kids and excursions as well where sometimes, they're, and even camps at times, the parents, if they'd like to, um, could, you know, be a part of the camp as well. What we really try to, to make happen is for parents to be comfortable to come to the school and feel as though we're, we're welcoming to them. Our topic has been changing schools, the transition from the primary to secondary years. We asked participants in this DVD what the one piece of advice they would offer people were involved in the process and this is what they said. I guess the one piece of advice is to stay positive, if you keep a positive attitude. Um, coming into the school and, and meeting the teachers um, and, and developing positive relationships with your, with your peers as well as the teachers I think is a key to being successful at school. Once the decision's made for secondary school, read the things that come home. Look, look at what the information is, there's really valuable information in there. Don't leave it too late, start looking at your secondary school options in Grade 5. 
there is not a better school, um, but there is a suitable school for your child and it's extremely important that you go together with your child and get the feel for the environment of that school to find out whether it is the one for you. The reality is that most students nearly all have a very smooth transition. My one piece of advice for a year, year six student would be to be organised and work on your organisation skills. Pay attention, don't get into much trouble. Never be absent on days that you have important subjects. It's important that you're not absent so then you don't miss out on important learning. A lot of your good friends might go to different schools but you make new friends. It's much more different from from primary school, but uh, you get used to it. Don't be scared, because like, it's fun. Well, that wraps it up. We've covered a lot of ground and given you plenty to think about. The main thing is to find the right fit so that your child can be as successful and as happy as possible. There are a lot of people in schools and elsewhere wanting to help young people make this transition successfully. Use them, talk to them. Don't be afraid to go back if you need more help or information, or if things don't work out as you'd like. Thanks for your company. See you at school.